Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Guess what? <laughs> Today, I am exactly two weeks away from competing in my very first, probably only ever, triathlon. It is an Ironman 70.3 distance on September 23rd, 2018 in Atlantic City, New Jersey. So the total distance is 70.3 miles. It's a 1.2 mile swim, 56 mile bike ride, and 13.1 mile run which sounds crazy. <laughs> um, you know what's nuts is that my training distances are pretty long these days. Uh, if you're interested in seeing my training plan, it's linked below. But um, it's almost like, almost not even very physically taxing anymore. Mentally, it's taxing. It takes a lot of my time. But physically, I don't feel fatigued afterwards, which is nuts to me. Um, today, I was talking to Autumn from Watch Autumn Keto. She is visiting New York and we got to hang out today and she said something that really made a lot of sense to me. She was talking about P90X and how what was kind of revolutionary about it was that it changed the workouts so frequently that your body never really got used to doing any one particular thing. And I was like, that's the opposite of what I'm doing with the training intentionally. I'm so consistently swimming and running and biking that now my body's used to it. And that's kind of the point, right? So that on race day, we're just doing what we're used to doing. And uh, it's it's nuts to me that I can go run 7 miles, 10 miles, 14 miles, and it's not, I'm not going to say it's no big deal, but that's something that I can do. If you guys remember, uh, just a couple months ago, I was not even fully believing that I could complete that without dying. So um, it's it's incredible. It's really just a testament to consistency. That's all it really takes. If you just keep doing something, even if you hate it, eventually it gets easier. And, you know, I've always enjoyed swimming. That's not a thing. And I've come to really love biking, actually. I don't love running. It's okay. I don't have to love everything, but I can do it. And that's kind of nuts to me. This week was pretty straightforward, um, except Monday was Labor Day and it was my rest day. So to have an off day coincide with a rest day was pretty awesome. I, I enjoyed it so much. Um... Yeah, other than that, my training was pretty straightforward. Oh, today I did train really early. I got up uh, much earlier than I normally do, but I had to bike 60 miles, which um, took me about three and a half hours, and I wanted to get all of that done before I saw Autumn, you know, because we were going into New York, and I knew I didn't want to, like, come back from that and then have to train, so I did that early in the morning, which I don't normally wake up that early, but um, then I got to thinking there are two kind of important things that I haven't trained yet. And one of them is the timing, right? I mean, the <clears throat> transition station opens at like four in the morning and you can set up your stuff between four and 6.30 and the race starts at seven. So, you know, maybe I'll get there for like six, set up my stuff and hang out until the race starts at seven. But that's early for me, you guys, <laughs> like really early. So, and I haven't really been training things in the morning and I probably should, um, or I, I need to at least think through my nutrition because now I've been training like in the afternoons after I've had like at least one or two full on meals. So, um, just kind of thinking it through, I've thought that I will probably swim fasted and then in the transition between swim and bike, I will probably eat like a stoka bar with some peanut butter. And then um, during the bike, I will take some almond butter with MCT packets with me, and, along with two full water bottles, each with a Zip Fizz and the, that has electrolytes and caffeine. And, um, and yeah, I think I'll be okay, but I need to really kind of think that through. The other thing I haven't trained is training without headphones. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but Ironman Athletics don't allow any kind of communication devices on race day. So no Bluetooth, no headphones, no phones, no walkie talkies, no speakers, nothing. You can have like a watch and that's it, but you can't be playing music or anything like that. So, um, I think this will really only matter during the run. Obviously, um, when I bike and I'm outdoors, I definitely don't wear headphones because you need to be like super aware of your surroundings. But, um, during the run, obviously when I train, I listen to music or I watch a bunch of YouTube videos if I'm on a treadmill and, um, 
honestly, I'm not using it in any sense to like pace my time or anything. It's not helping my run in that sense. It just keeps my mind occupied. And I think on race day, because there's going to be like so much going on and like the run happens on the boardwalk of Atlantic City, it's like really beautiful and there's going to be like spectators and stuff. I think my mind will be distracted enough. Um, but that's the other thing I haven't really trained. So I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Maybe one day I'll try to run somewhere without headphones, but I don't want to do it if I don't have to. <laughs> um, um, I did take my bike to the mechanic this week. Um, for the last like four weeks out of the blue, every time I pedaled the left side, I would hear this like click, 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 click. And um, I didn't feel anything funny. It was just like making the sound. But my coach Jackie was like, look, you really need to get that checked out just to make sure nothing mechanically goes wrong on race day that you can't handle. You know, I did learn how to fix a flat tire, but that's about it as far as what I can do to fix my bike. I think I can also fix my gears if they like fall off, kind of, if the chain falls off the gears. I don't know. But anything other than that, I'm not prepared to repair. So um, I took it to the mechanic and it wouldn't do it. They had like three different guys ride it around, ride it up hills, slow, fast, blah, blah. I rode it around, couldn't get it to do it. So I guess bikes are like cars and that when you need to show the mechanic what it's doing, it just won't. Um, hopefully it's just like a problem that has resolved itself somehow. It's just gone forever. But, you know, they did like tighten everything up to make sure everything seemed okay and it seems fine. So I still have two weeks, you know, I will obviously continue riding my bike and hopefully that won't happen again. Um, the YMCA that is near my house has reopened about two weeks ago. The pool closed for maintenance. So I had been going to a different YMCA that was like 35 minutes away from my house. And yeah, I mean, as you can imagine, I'm spending a lot of time training as it is. So to add like over an hour of driving time to get to a pool was inconvenient. Um, but I did it over the last two weeks. I am so glad that the one near my house has reopened. Um, although I will say the pool that I had been going to for the last two weeks had these big digital clocks, like four of them. So I, at each corner of the pool, so I could see them at all times when I was swimming, which was so helpful. I really think that's a big part of what, um, helped me increase my speed in swimming. Um, and the pool by my house has like one analog clock. So like the second hand goes round and it's small and it's in the corner. So like I can see it when I start and I swim and then I can see it when I'm done and like see how long it took me. But, you know, having those big digital clocks was really nice and helpful. Obviously, I won't have that on race day, so whatever. But that was nice. Um, yeah. Oh, and uh, one day this week. Um, OK, so. <laughs> You guys remember for August, I was chosen as like member of the month at my gym. Well, at the gym at work. Well, internally, they published this like health and wellness newsletter that goes out to all employees. And I was like featured in the newsletter. Um, so this email went out to literally all the employees of the company, which, you know, I work at a really big company. And so a lot of people started emailing me, congratulating me about the race and, and my training and my weight loss and stuff like that. And, um, and one guy emailed me and he said, Hey, what race are you doing? I'm doing the Ironman in Atlantic city. I was like, Hey, me too. Um, so we decided to meet up over coffee and kind of chat about it. It's his first 70.3 distance as well. Although he's done, uh, many smaller, um, triathlons, sprint distance and Olympic distance. So, uh, we got to talking and we also met up with, uh, Stephanie and, um, Stephanie is the, if you guys remember during my training rides with Jackie on Tuesdays, Often one other lady joins us and she does triathlon triathlons all the time. Well, that's Stephanie. And it turns out she's like super chatty and she loves to like talk about triathlons and her experience. And she's done the Atlantic city race in particular before. So anyway, she met up with us too. And they both, we all just got to talking and, um, it was great because they answered questions I didn't even know I should have been asking. Um, but they gave me a couple tips that I will mention here. So about the swim, uh, you're allowed to s put yourself in, the order that you see fit. So it's a self seating start. Um, they group people. Um, if you think your swim time will be under 26 minutes, they go first, then 10 minute increments, right? So if you think your time will be between 26 and 35, 36 and 45, 46 and 55, and then 56 plus. Um, right now, uh, in my training, I'm between 36 and 38 minutes. So you would think I should be in the group that's like 36 to 45. 
However, Stephanie said to always go in the group faster than you because that way you're not like fighting to pass. Better to be like the slowest person in a group so that you're more spaced out rather than to be the fastest person in a group because then you have to pass a bunch of people. So um, I don't know. It makes me very nervous to go with the group of 26 to 35 because I'm not that fast. But what she said makes sense. You know, if they all pass me, then I will have more space. And I guess sometimes it gets very cramped and crowded. So um I don't know. I'm still thinking that one through. So that was interesting. Um, for the biking, she very much recommended that I just like pace myself with someone and kind of like stay with them the whole time because, uh, for this there, um, you can't draft. Drafting is illegal, which means you can't like ride right behind somebody else. It has to be a distance of six bike lengths. So eventually it all ends up being like a single file line of people biking, basically. Um, and if you do want to pass somebody, you have to pass them within like 20 seconds or fall back again. So she said the best thing to do is to just find somebody and match their pace and just stick with them the whole time, which was smart. I hadn't thought about that. Um, at some point I said, are there, you know, like bathrooms at the age stations? And she's like, oh yeah, there's porta potties all over. But really you get, you learn to get comfortable peeing on the bike. I'm like, what? I don't think I'm ever going to do that, but apparently that's the thing that people do. Okay. Um, oh, also she said that even though the course is like super, super flat, sometimes it can be very windy. And, um, that was unexpected to her. Like when you're riding into a headwind, what do you do? It, should you like power through it and like push really hard or apparently not? Apparently the right answer is that you should, that's the time when you should kind of slow down, take in your nutrition and just kind of wait it out in a sense, like keep going, but don't like push really hard and uh, do push really hard when that's not the case. So good to know. Um, and then for the run, she said, look, if you need to run and walk, no shame in that. Lots of people will be doing it. I mean, obviously lots of people will be running the whole thing, but if you need to run, walk, no big deal. And I said, that's awesome because I always run, walk, <laughs> um, even in my training, I've never done any like full on no walk running. I always run and walk. So, um, even with the run walk, I'm pacing at about 12 minute miles, 1130 if I'm in a good day. So, you know, I don't think that's too, too bad. All in all, I'm trending about six hours and 45 minutes for the whole race. So, um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited. I felt like it was just, it was really good to talk to this guy and Stephanie about their own race experiences. And, um, like I said, they answered questions I didn't even realize I had. Um, so yeah, I, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling really good. Uh, next week, so a week from today is Susie's triathlon and I will be there, hopefully get a little bit of footage. I'm just like so excited to support her. And also this will be the first triathlon that I ever witness <laughs> in person. So that will be very exciting. Meanwhile, my husband is going to the beach with his family. Um, and of course I was invited to go, but I have declined the invitation for a couple of reasons. Um, mainly I, I don't think I'd be able to keep up with my training and like the week before my race, it's important that I don't slack off. Also, I need to be able to like eat properly and you know, you can kind of like wing it on vacation a little bit, but I want to like really be on point over the next couple of weeks. So, um, he's going to the beach and he's coming back a couple of days before my race. So, um, yeah, I feel like I'm really going to buckle down and focus this week and, uh, it's going to be great. So I will talk with you soon and next week I will have footage from Susie's race, hopefully. So have a great week and I will talk to you later.